the video and today I'm going to be making a tutorial basically going over um, object oriented programming using JavaScript. So I'll go over the basics of classes and objects and all that kind of stuff and then I'll transition into talking about the four pillars of object oriented programming and how they are implemented and how they are seen in JavaScript code. And then at the end I'll also go over some GitHub repositories which implement object oriented programming in JavaScript and basically just to show some use cases that you might like some some examples of why you might want to use object oriented programming in your JavaScript code. So let's actually get started into the tutorial and we'll go through the basics until the end. So object oriented programming is actually a programming paradigm which uh, tells you that you should divide your code into different objects and those objects contain fields and methods and when I say fields I basically mean variables and when I say methods I basically mean functions. So what happens is those objects are connected, can be connected to each other and you can change data that is inside of them. Also, there are many things that you can do when you divide your project into objects because you can basically, because you can basically protect data from some objects or even share them between different objects. And if you are new to object oriented programming, you might think that you've never seen object oriented programming code before. However, it is present in most of the modern languages. For example, whenever you're coding into like browser JavaScript, you're you're accessing a lot of objects, and w one of the main objects that you usually like, one of the most used object that you access all the time is the DOM. The DOM is an object containing everything in your page, and you can see that there's different methods inside of it. There's different fields. There's different elements inside of it, and that's basically the idea. So also every single not like data structure, every single data structure that exists in JavaScript or even the types in JavaScript, most of them um, are defined as objects. So for example, if I were to come over here and say something like console.log and I said like type of, um, let's, think of let's think of something. I'm going to put an array here, just a, an empty array. If we were to console log this, and by the way, I'm using Node.js which like it doesn't matter you can do this in normal JavaScript as well I'm just using Node.js so I can just see the console over here and I don't need to go to the browser but if I were to console this over here you would see that the type of this array is actually an object which is really interesting right why would why would it be an object if I were to change this to a string like this if we were to console this this you can see it's a string but why is an array an object right Actually, a string is also an object. It's a type, uh, which it's an object that is is filled and and created to be abstracted into this that we see right here. However, inside of it, the underlying code between be, behind creating a string is actually a lot more complex than we might imagine. And we have we have access to objects all the time. Also, you probably already used something like this, right? If I were to create an object over here, something like user and I set it equal to this, this over here is an object. You can put whatever you want over here. You, you can put keys and, and values, right? As you might know, I can put here my name and it's equal to something like Pedro, right? But you can also put functions inside of here. You can put um, get name and you can basically just put a function directly into this object, right? Well, this is literally what an object is in object oriented programming. It's basically a, 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 a parent which contains different fields. So name is a field and methods. So get name is a method. So actually, this isn't the way that we define objects. If you're going to code in object oriented programming, um, we actually do it create by creating classes. And the reason for that is because it becomes a lot more um, well structured, you become it becomes a lot easier to read your code and also to manipulate it so that you can do whatever you want to do with it. So what you can do is actually you can create different objects by using the class keyword. So the class keyword was all, was actually only introduced in the ECMAScript 2015. And before that, um, honestly, I don't know how they wrote object, like how they created stuff like this because I wasn't writing JavaScript in 2015. However, nowadays what you can do is you can just define an object like this. And an example that I will give to you guys is, imagine we wanna create a person, right? And what do I mean by a person? We, we want to create an entity or something that will be will have like common fields and common methods. 
and we want to reuse that code many times. So that's why we would create a person because people might be different, but they will have some underlining similarities like each person might have a name, each person might have an age. So that's the kind of thing that we want to share, right? So if I create a class or an object called person, we can just add those fields and methods that all like every single person has into this and it will become a lot more reusable. So to create a class, you can just say class and the name of the class. So let's for now uh, call this person because if I want to create a person like each person that I'm going to create, it's going to be a person, right? So inside of here, we can actually just add different properties. Like I can create a variable, a field over here called name and I can set it equal to, I don't know, Pedro. And I can also create a function here like get name. And it's just a function which literally just returns the name, like return name. However, there's one thing, right? Also, you need to put a, a like either variable or const, but you can see that it's not working, right? And the reason for that is because we are actually not structuring our code correctly here. When you create a class, you need to make sure that you actually put a constructor. And what do I mean by a constructor is literally when you run your class, when you create your class, your object, when you instantiate your object, the constructor will be the first thing that is that, that runs. And inside of it, you can put different um, variables that are going to come when you instantiate a new person and basically set them so that they're accessible throughout your class. And what do I mean by that? Well, when I want to create a new person, I want to pass, for example, a name and an age, right? I want to pass those two things. So these are the only two things that are different from each person. So if I were to create a person called Pedro, I would pass Pedro and the age would be 19, right? If I wanted to create another person like Jack, I would create Jack and the age would be 26, right? So how can we actually differ the, the kind of person that we're creating? Well, with the constructor, you can just pass this two variables that we want inside of here. So I can pass, I, I can say that this each person will receive a name and an age. However, these two variables that we will receive over here, they aren't accessible throughout your class. They aren't like they, they can't be accessed. And the way to make them access uh, accessible is actually by using the this keyword. And why do we need to use this? Well, when you say this over here, you can create like any variable you want inside of here. And like I can create this dot age equals to 38, 389, actually. And like anywhere inside of your class, you can just say this dot age, and you can access or this variable right here. Because what you're saying is this over here is relating to the class. And you're saying that this class has a variable called age, and it's equal to 389. So when that, like anywhere inside of the class, you say this dot age, you're, it knows automatically what you're talking about. So this is how you actually define these variables. Um, to make this variable right here that we get when we instantiate this class, we can just say this dot name equal to name. And this is something that I remember that I used to get really confused in the beginning when I used to do object oriented programming in Java, because like, why would we write this dot name equal name? Like, why, why are we rewriting the variable? The reason for that is exactly what I just mentioned. This variables right here that we get when we instantiate the object, it's not they're not accessible, like anywhere else in the class. So this is how we make them accessible. So we need to do the same thing for the age. So this dot age equals to age. And now we have these two variables, which allow us to create an actual person. So in theory, we are already we're already done, like we can just create, we can actually use this object to create different people. And to actually instantiate uh, an object or in class, you can just create a variable here. So I'll create a person one, for example, and I'm going to set it equal to new person. And you can see that per, the, the new variable right here is probably something um, if you're new with object oriented programming, you, you haven't used this before. Basically, when you want to create an instance of the class, when you want to like create a new person, you actually need to use the new um, variable right here, the new not variable, the new keyword. Basically, you're just saying that you want to instantiate a new version of the person class. So inside of here, we actually have to pass two variables. And the two variables are the two variables that we passed in the constructor. So I'll pass over here. Um, I want to create a, a person with the name of Pedro and the age of 19. 
So now this is literally it. We just created a person. I can access the fields in this object right here. So for example, if I want to console log my name, I can say person one dot name. And if I come here to my to my terminal, and I just refresh this and I run the code again, you can see that it actually correctly said that my name is Pedro, right? So this is great. Um, but actually, this isn't something that you would like to do if you're writing if you're designing your project in an object oriented manner. The reason for this is because you don't want to have full access to the fields directly from out the outside. What you actually want to do is you actually want to create methods inside of your functions that basically just return those fields. And I know this looks dumb, this sounds dumb, but every CS student who had an object oriented class before, uh, they know that their teacher definitely made them create this kind of methods. And honestly, um, it's necessary to some extent. So I'm going to teach you guys how to do that. And what do I mean by that is, for example, if somewhere in my code, I want to have access to the name of the person, right, then I literally just have to create a, a function called get name. And it's literally just a function, which its only purpose is to return the name. So I can just say return dot this dot name. And now instead of saying person one dot name, I can just say person one dot get name. And now I'm accessing a function inside of this class. And if I refresh my page again, you'll see that it correctly console log my name, which is great. So let's actually create one for age as well, because you want to create it to for all the variables and fields that you want to have access to its values. So let's say get age, and this dot age, so it should work with this as well, we can also console log, um, get age over here. But now you might be wondering, okay, we just like this is too like too many lines of code for something that doesn't do much, right? Um, actually, no, because look at this. First of all, you can see that we're correctly console logging the age. But most importantly, now we create we not only created a person class, but now we've created an object that can be reused to create many different people. For example, I can come over here, and I can just copy this. And I can just create a new person. So I'll call this person two. And let's just call them Moise Keen, a div completely different person, this person should be like 23. And instead of console logging person one dot name, actually, I'll console log both person one dot get name, and person two dot get name. So you guys can see that we're actually creating different people. So let's actually save this. And let's run our code again. And you can see that we are correctly console logging two different people, because we are instantiating two different objects. Um, that are completely different because we are passing different fields. But this looks cool, right? But there's a lot more that we can do with object oriented programming. And when I mean improve, I mean, let's make this a little bit more complex. You can see we have a very simple class, right? There's only two methods or two functions. And there's only two fields, right? However, imagine that we want to create more stuff, let's actually create a new object, a new class that will take in the person class as one of its fields. And you might be thinking, okay, that's weird. But for example, imagine we want to create um, a class called home, right? And this class contains a bunch of information about your house, including all the people that lives inside of it. So for example, if I wanted to get a list of all the people that lives inside of my house, I might want to get an array of person right? If you get what I mean, this is the kind of stuff that you can do if you're coding in an object oriented manner. So how exactly do we do that? Well, let's create a class, right? Another class called um, house. I don't know if yeah, yeah, house, let's call it house. And as we did before, we can create a constructor here. And the constructor will take in some stuff. One of the things that it will take in is probably um, like, I don't know, address, um, I'll just make up the addresses when I create this, but let's take in address, then um, let me think about this price. I don't know, I'm just I'm just inventing stuff uh, on the spot. But then most importantly, we might want to have um, residence, right? And residence is actually a list. So this is the important thing, right? The residence is a list of person. So what we can do here is we just created our constructor. So what we have to do is we need to do the th same thing that we did over there, we create our class fields. So this dot address is equal to address. 
So let me just come over here and say equal to address, then this dot price is equal to price. And this dot residence is equal to residence. Okay, so now we have our three fields. So what exactly do we need now? Well, we just created three fields. And maybe we want to create a get for each of these fields. So let's actually do that. Let's create our get address. And I know this is annoying, but it's just something that you have to do if you're going to code in object oriented programming, because it will make your code a lot more um, protected and also a lot more organized. So let's just return this dot address, then let's do the same for get price. And then let's return this dot price. And finally, let's get residence, right? And it's going to basically just be a function like we did before, and it's going to return this dot residence. So now let's test this, right? Let's just come over here. And let's create a house. So a house, just a simple house, and it's going to be equal to new house. But inside of here, we have to pass three pieces of information. One of them is going to be the address, I'm just going to put something like random this I know this isn't an address, but I'm just going to put this then price, let's say it's about 280,000. I don't know, these are rich people, then residents. So remember, residents is supposed to be a list of people, right? A list of, of the different people. So let's put an array here. However, we currently don't have different people to put here. So what we can do is let's create diff two different people, right? Let two different persons, right? So let's create here, um, Pedro, it's equal to new person. I'll just go a little bit down, scroll down, new person, and the name is Pedro, and the age is 19. And then let's create um, my brother. This is actually my brother, his name is David. And let's create a new person. And his name is David He's 21. I think probably I don't remember 21. Now we have two different people. Oh, I accidentally clicked on something. Yeah, two different people that we want to make re them as residents of this house. So what can we do? Well, we can come over here and just pass Pedro and David inside of our list. And now we can just first of all, console log and if we want to console log the residents, we can just say console log house dot get residence. Let's see what this gives us, right? Let's save this. And let's run this code. And as you can see, Similarly to what I mentioned before, how objects work in JavaScript, you can see that when we re when we console log our list of residents, we actually get different objects, right? So we get two person objects, and each object contains different information. For example, it contains different functions, it contains different fields. But most importantly, you can see clearly that we are actually, um, ha we actually have a list of two objects objects. So this looks great, right? This is exactly what we wanted. But let's do more stuff with this. One of the things that you might want to do with um, with the house is you actually want to add a resident. Imagine I get married, right? Something that it's not going to happen for a few years. But imagine I get married, then I want to add a resident. So let's create a, a, a method called add resident. And it's going to be a, a function very simply over here. And all we want to do is we just want to append a new resident to this list. So how do we actually append a new resident to this list? First of all, we want to take in a person as our argument to this function. So let's take in resident as the argument. And inside of here, let's actually do this, we have access to the residence array, right the residence list. So what we can do is we can just say this dot residence dot push because push is a is a function is a function to add new stuff to the array. And we can just push the new resident. And maybe if we want at the end of this, we can just return the the residence list. But actually, no, I just want to show you guys um, how exactly we can see if the resident has actually been pushed, right. So we just added this to our uh, house object, right. So what we can do is we have your our, our beautiful house, and we have only two people inside of it. So let's come over here, we can say get resident, as you can see, and it will obviously show as we saw before, it will only show me and Dave, like David and I, right, because there's only two people inside of it. But now let's say house dot add resident. And let's actually add a new person. So let's create a new person here. 
Um, I'm gonna create Paulo. Paulo is my university roommate. So let me create new person and let's say Paulo. I think he's 19 as well, so 19. And let's just put here, we wanna add Paulo as a new resident. After this is done, we just wanna return house.getResident again, right? And I should actually call this residence instead of get resident because it's more than one like person, right? So I just wanna come over here and I wanna console.log house.getResident. And let's actually see if this worked, right? If we were able to add Paulo as a resident, right? So let's check this. Let's run this code again. And as you can see, the first time it console logged at the top here, it only had two people, right? This is the first array, the first console log that we told it to basically to console log, only having Pedro and David. But then we added a resident and we have a new array over here, which at the end contains Paulo. So this is great. We were able to actually uh, change the data, mutate the data inside of our objects, which is exactly what object-oriented programming um, tells you to do, right? Um, I feel like this would be a great example. And if you're a, a new student, you're, you're learning object-oriented programming in college, this is mo like probably what you're going to be doing a lot. You have to kind of like make your mind think in an object-oriented programming manner because you don't see like people, if you're coding in JavaScript, you don't usually see people coding uh, like this, right? However, I'm gonna show you guys at the end of this video, various examples that are actually very fitting and that use this the same kind of design to make their programs. Either they're programming just a, a normal client side JavaScript program, or they're building an API with Node.js and Express. Uh, there's many use cases of to using object oriented programming. And despite people not thinking of JavaScript as an object oriented programming language, you can definitely do a lot of stuff with it. So now what I want to do is I just introduced you guys to some of the basics of object oriented programming. Now I want to basically just go over the four pillars of object oriented programming and demonstrate how they are applied in JavaScript. So getting into the the four pillars of object oriented programming, we want to talk about the first one. So the first one that I actually want to introduce is abstraction. And the reason why I, why I want to introduce this first is because what we have done so far is basically what abstraction is. So think about this abstraction in the simplest form is just um, hiding implementation of like a complex piece of code, so that like you don't have to rewrite the same piece of code or you don't even need to access that piece of code um, if you just want to access like like the the code as a whole. So I know that explanation doesn't seem like the best one. However, just think about this. What we've done so far is we created two different classes, right? And imagine that I don't like I don't care about the person class. I just care about the house, right? And inside of it, I have the residence, right? So in theory, when I say for example, when I say when I just have the house and I say house one dot um, add resident and I say something like new person and I add a person like right here like Pedro um, and in, like my age when I do something like this, I'm basically abstracting the code for person because I don't know what's inside of person or at least I don't need to because I just know that I have to do this right here. And this is all I need. I'm just creating a new person and I'm adding it to the house. So in theory, a person who is coding like uh, the house class or working with the house um, object, they don't need to see the code for the person because it doesn't matter for them or because it's abstracted. It would be different if, for example, we had to for like for each resident, we had to define all the different stuff that that uh, we need each time that we actually add the new resident. So imagine that, for example, um, a person had another field that isn't actually, we don't actually need to get this from the constructor. It's just something that we might want to have, right? So for example, imagine we want to have um, this dot um, job, right? And it's a string. It's a string. Just imagine like this, right? It's a string. And if I want to add the job for the person, I want to set the job for the person, I can create a, a method over here called set job and just do it like this. And now I can just um, this dot job equals to whatever job I put inside of here, right? I'm going to put job over here. And I'm just saying this dot job equal to job. So initially, the person doesn't have a job because when you create a person, you obviously don't 
have the argument in the constructor to add the job, right? So let's come over here and I'll just create this house, like let house equal to new house. And I'll just add all the weird information that we have, such as the address, then what else? Um, then let's add the price, I'll just put whatever. And then let's just add the list of residents, which will start as empty. So now let's add a resident to this house, right? We just add Pedro. And now what we can do is we can just say, okay, I want to console log the house dot residence, right? Or not not dot residence, let's actually just console log get residence like this. Now let's take a look at this. Let's console log this and you can see that despite not defining job in the constructor, we still have job as one of the stuff inside of here, right? Now, let's try something else. Let's in, like, let's just come over here and add, um, let's actually, yeah, let's just come over here and actually create Pedro. So let Pedro like this equal to new person. And let's just copy this stuff over here and paste it inside of here. So now instead of adding new person, I'll just add Pedro like this. And now over here, I want to actually say, well, I want to get Pedro and I want to set job equal to developer, right? Now let's take a look at what happens when we console log the residence. And as you can see perfectly, the code for like, we, we don't care about the code that, that sets the job. We just care that like the person in our house has a job of a developer, right? So that's the cool stuff. That's the actual cool stuff. And, and let's test one more thing. If I get pedro.setjob and I change its value after I actually added Pedro to my house. Let's see what happens. If I save this and I just node index.js, you'll see that it works. And why does it work? You can see that we actually added um, Pedro to our house after, like before we changed its job title. So why is the changing the, the change in Pedro affecting um, the object in the house? Because that's the important stuff that, that that's the actual uh, cool stuff that you can do with object oriented programming, you can in, you can mutate different objects so that you don't have to actually have direct uh, access to the code for that class specifically to make a change that is completely um, important in a different class. So this is the abstraction, you don't need to see the the, the code for person to be able to make a house. So I hope this explanation was clear. But if you have any doubts, just leave a comment down below because I know how hard it is to grasp the concepts, especially the four pillars of object oriented programming. So now let's go into the next one we're going to talk about is encapsulation. And again, similar to abstraction, we've already seen some of encapsulation being like some of the print like the idea of the, the principle behind encapsulation being used in the code that we've written so far. So what exactly is encapsulation? Well, encapsulation just means that you want to protect certain fields in a class or an object so that people outside or the, the people who access that object, they don't access directly the field itself, but methods that can change the field or just return its value. So if you paid attention to what we've done so far, you realize that um, every time we create a get price or a get residence, or even add resident like a get and set method, which is what what they usually call it, they call they, they call this getters and setters, which basically means we're if we want to receive the price, if we want to see the value for price, we don't actually access price itself, we could do this, in theory, over here, I can just say console log, for example, let me create a house, I'll just say let house, no, actually, I'll create a person, let Pedro equal to new person, like this, and I'll just pass Pedro, and like whatever age, right, I can in theory, come over here and say console.log Pedro dot age, right, I can do this. But if we're truly following the, the the principles of object oriented programming, and you can see that this would work, right, this says my age, but if we're truly following the principles of object oriented programming, then we wouldn't want to do this. And the reason for that is because um, object oriented programming preys over the fact that you need to be very secure with the code. So I don't want to be able to directly change this. However, there isn't a very clear way of creating private variables in classes in JavaScript, there is a way but it's not like it's not the best way of doing it. So I'm going to show you guys some alternatives. The thing is, if you want to make this age variable, um, something that is private, um, you can just 
not use the this class. The reason why we can access this is because we're saying this dot name, right? If we didn't have this, then we in theory wouldn't be able to access it whenever we instantiate a person class. However, we have to have this the, the, the this keyword, right? Because we want to access the name in other methods. So in theory, what we can do to make all of this private is just put all of these methods inside of the constructor. And this is 100% legal, I can just put it over here. And it would work. However, this isn't the like this isn't how like how this was meant to be. So it, it wouldn't be considered um, very like uh, organized code in my opinion. So you could do it like this and then change all of this uh, variables to remove the, this keyword. But I wouldn't recommend doing it like this. I actually recommend that if you're working in a team, which is using object oriented programming in JavaScript, you just use an underscore behind each variable that you actually want to make private. So that will signal to the people like that are accessing your code that this shouldn't be a variable that that like they, they can access outside. So you would just use this underscore over here. And in theory, you're not protecting against hackers, I'm talking about protecting against uh, people in your own team, which can make mistakes, and consequently can ruin your code, right. So when you put an underscore, it's a way to signal them that you shouldn't be accessing this field individually. And that's actually the best thing. So that's why I mentioned in the beginning that for every field that you create, or every useful field that you create, you should have a get the like a get for the field and a set for the field. So that's the important thing about encapsulation, one of the most useful and definitely one of the most important pillars of object oriented programming, which is inheritance. And you probably heard about inheritance before it is a very common interview question for internships, because it's something that we learn in, in college. So it's something that is really important in the programming kind of environment, because it allows you to do a lot of stuff. And the main example that I can come up with over here on how inheritance work, especially in JavaScript, is let's think about this. Imagine that I want to create a new class or a new object called programmer, right? So a programmer is just a normal programmer, we can put like the the their company, the company they work for, and maybe their salary or and also the language that they like the most, right? These are the things that we want. Let's create this constructor. Let's do the, the thing as always just say this dot company equals to company, then I'm not going to create the getters and setters for for the programmer specifically, but um, you guys will see why we like just this is just for demonstration purposes, just so you guys can understand inheritance, but we're basically just creating a programmer. And over here, we might want to have like, actually, I'll just create something like a, a, a method, which is purpose is just to say, Hello, I am a programmer. So let's do this, I'll just come over here and say, um, greet, no, say hi, I'll create a method called say hi. And it's literally just a simple method, um, which it literally just says, um, hello, I am a programmer. Um, I work for and let's put over here the company that you work for. So to do that, I'm actually going to use the back ticks to you to implement JavaScript variables inside of it. So I'll just say something like I work for um, and I'll say this dot company, right? I'm basically just saying hello, I am a programmer, I work for this dot company. And that's perfectly nice, right? This is great. I I can say this if I came over here and I created a programmer. So let um, programmer equal to um, new programmer. And I say that I work for I don't know, Twitch, and my salary is a billion, whatever. And my language, my favorite programming language is, um, let's say JavaScript, right? It's actually TypeScript, but let's just leave it like this. And I wanted to say something like programmer dot say hi. So if I did this, you'll see that it would work, right? If I just call, run this, you'll see it says Hello, I'm a programmer, I work for Twitch. So what happens here is that um, we are we have direct access to the say hi method, right? But let's think about this, a programmer is actually a person, right? I know that that sounds like dumb, but yeah, it's a person. So maybe 
like a programmer, like its purpose isn't just to say it's co the company they work for, its salary, and their favorite programming language. Every programmer has much more about them than this. For example, I might want to know their age or their name, but how exactly do I know that? Do I just add those fields over here and suddenly our constructor takes in like a billion different arguments? No. What I can do is I can actually say that the class of programmer extends the person class. And what this means is programmer is is a person. So <laughs> this is the best explanation I can come up with. Pro a programmer will have access to all of the person like the, the person methods and like methods and fields that a person has. So what exactly we can do is we can just come over here. And let's think about this a person takes in a name and an age, right? So we can come here to our programmer constructor, and we can pass a name and an age. But most importantly, we're not going to say this dot name equals name or this dot age equals age because the code that like that that treats this the name and the age isn't really like we shouldn't write the methods inside of programmer, they should exist inside of person. So what we can do is we can actually just say super and the super keyword basically says, okay, our super class or our parent class, which is person, we want to pass the following, like we want to call its constructor, we want to instantiate it and pass the following values. So we want to pass name and age. So I'm basically basically just creating a person whenever I create a programmer. So super just creates the an instance of the parent class, and I'm passing to its constructor, the following values. And this is great, because now what we can do is we can come over here and say something like, Hello, I am a programmer. My name is and instead of just not having your name over here, you can just say, my name is this dot get name. And you can clearly see that it's giving me some autocomplete, which is weird, right? Because there's no get name to this class to the programmer class. However, since we just did this, since we said we said that it extends the person class, now we have full access to whatever class exists to whatever methods and fields exist in our person class. So this is great, we can just do it like this. And let's just run this. However, we need to make some changes here, we need to pass the arguments for for the person, right? So let's pass my name is Pedro, for example, um, my age is 19. And all the information. So these two arguments are the ones that are going to be passed in the super to go to the constructor of our person class. And now let's just run this again. And as you can see, it says Hello, I am a programmer, my name is Pedro and I work for Twitch. So you can see it works perfectly, we have full access to whatever classes and methods we, we to whatever fields and methods we defined on our super class. And this is actually the most useful thing, I believe, from the four um, pillars of object oriented programming, this is the one where you're probably going to be using the most because it just saves you a lot of time. It just abstracts a lot of code, you need you don't need to like if you want to reuse code, you can just do it this way. So definitely is something that I would recommend learning a lot about object oriented programming. And honestly, um, I left this one to the to the end because it is probably one of the most uh, one of the things that you will you will need to learn the least in JavaScript, in my opinion, by the way, it's not don't don't take like take this with a grain of salt. But I think that it is the thing that you should learn the least in JavaScript, because it is very like, it's it's everywhere when you code in JavaScript, literally, I'll show you guys an example of it. What I'm talking about is is polymorphism. And I know that this word sounds really weird, sounds really difficult, but the literally what it means is um, changing the form of something. Yeah, I, I think that's the, the, the main definition is like something can take many forms. And I'll give you guys a very clear example right now. Um, if you go to JavaScript, for example, and I'll just uh, like kind of like comment this out a bit. If I came here to my JavaScript code, and I said, console log, and I said something like, um, one equals to one. So you can clearly see that this aren't like this two things aren't equal, right? One is a number. And this string over here is like, despite saying it's one, it's, it's a string, right? It's not a number. So let's console log this to see what happens. As you can see, it says it's true.
And the reason for this is because JavaScript on its underlying code, it, it does a lot of guessing. It does a lot of guessing and changing like forms of stuff just so that it knows what you mean by them, right? And that this is exactly what I mean by why I like to code in TypeScript. You, you define everything. You don't let JavaScript have control over you. But in this case, you have to. For example, an, an example of, of polymorphism is also like just defining variables, right? If I create a variable called, um, I don't know, name, and I set it equal to a string called Pedro, if this isn't a, like a, a, a typed language like JavaScript, this is polymorphism because it's basically guessing what type you want. It's, it's changing. This could be, name could be a number. Name could be 300 and whatever you can see right here. It could be a number. But so it means that it takes many different forms. It can be a Boolean as well. Like I can say it's false, right? So this is the idea. Um, obviously, it, it shouldn't make a lot of sense right now, but like why we need to learn this. But for example, if I came over here and I said that I want to add um, 340 plus um, 432, right? If I console log this, you'll see that this over here will equal 340 four three two so it basically converted 340 into a string and it just appended like it, it just united both of them together which sounds weird right but this is the idea it's just converting it's changing the form of this number right here so that it satisfies whatever like code that they wrote to make this uh, happen in javascript they made this uh, purposefully so they used polymorphism to make this work but most importantly, what is an example of polymorphism when you're working with classes, right? So when I'm working with um, like this example right here, I have a person and I have a programmer. Well, let's 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 try to create a different class, right? Imagine that we had a different class over here that actually this class over here is not a programmer. It's actually just, uh, I don't know, let me think about this, um, a doctor, right? A doctor is a person as well. So why can't we just create another class, another object called doctor, which also extends person. So doctor would also take name and age as the first ones, but it might take something else like um, area, like, I don't know, like salary, I'll, I'll get salary. I don't want to waste time with this, but basically it can take different constructor uh, arguments as you can see right here. And similarly to programmer, it can access all the classes from person. So like person can takes into many like it can takes many it can take many forms right it can be a programmer it can be a doctor so this is the basic idea and there's many different types of polymorphism and the reason why i don't want to go that much in depth on it is because i don't want to i don't want you guys to think that this is as important as the other pillars because it won't be like being completely honest when you're working with your code you won't be thinking about polymorphism because probably if you're going to do stuff like uh, function overloading which by the way is just like a uh, creating two functions with the same name, um, you probably don't, won't find that, like you won't encounter that the case uh, very often, right? So unless you're working directly with a like very, very strictly typed language or a language like Java, which object-oriented programming is everything, then I don't recommend focusing a lot of your time with polymorphism. And if you have any questions about polymorphism, if you're a, a, a university student and you have doubts, just leave a comment down below. I'll answer everyone. So yeah, this is the basic idea of polymorphism. So now I'll just go over like one or two GitHub repositories that I find that are using object-oriented programming to write their JavaScript code. Okay, guys. So first of all, shout out to this person over here. I have no idea who they are. However, um, I just got this random... Um, GitHub repository online, and I think I can go over the code because it's completely public, right? So basically, this is an express API written completely following the object oriented programming principles. So if you've coded um, an express API before, you know that normally people don't teach you how to do it um, by creating classes, that kind of stuff. However, I'm going to be honest, th the current startup that I'm working in, we have to use classes, we have to follow object oriented programming principles. So it's just something that you might encounter, right? I can't show the code for my work because it's not a public repository. It's not open source. However, this one is just a random project, which I think will help you guys understand a bit. So in the S3C folder for their project, let's look at where their server starts. And as you can see, they actually have everything that you would normally have if you're working with a normal Express API, but also they create a class. So they're working through with 
all the things that I mentioned before, they have their methods, they have their, as you can see, set routes, they have their getters and setters, and they just work through everything by creating objects. And at the end, they don't export, um, I don't know, the, the express variable, they actually export the class itself. So that if they want to access it wherever they want to, it just works, right? So for example, I'll come over here to routes. Um, let's see what they do with routes. So they, they, they put everything into the controllers, I guess the controllers will also have like will also be an object oriented programming design. Um, apparently, no, I, I made be I just got a unfinished um, project. I think so. Yeah, this is unfinished. I'll just find another one right now. Okay, guys, so actually, I just found this medium article, which I'm going to link in the description if you guys want to check it out. Um, it talks a lot about everything that I just mentioned. It talks about abstraction, polymorphism, everything related to um, implementing and creating um, an object oriented programming um, JavaScript program. So I'm going to link this in the description if you guys want to check it out. Um, definitely go go check it out. It, it looks like a really nice article. I read a bit of it, but I didn't obviously read everything. But it, it looks like it talks a lot about how to implement and it's talking about express servers. So it, it basically will go over how to implement the object oriented programming design principles while creating an express server. So this is the basic idea. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment down below. It took me a long time to make this video. I've been recording for like hours now. But yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, join my Discord because I answer a lot of questions there. I, I'm currently doing kind of like a, a project. I, I'm going to record a video at the end of this month where I just basically review my subscribers projects. So if you want to submit it, the link is in the description, you just go to the project gallery channel and just submit your project there because I definitely want to see it. So I would really appreciate if you guys did that. And subscribe because I'm posting three times a week and I would really appreciate it. So yeah, really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I see you guys next time.